Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, Coach Rick and uh, Greg McGarrity will each have a, a brief opening statement, and then we'll take your questions. Please remember we have floor microphones, so if you'll raise your hand when you have a question, and we'll get one of the floor microphones to you. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, I wrote some notes. I don't think I'll need them, but I'll take a peek if I need to. But the first thing I want to do is just uh, thank uh, the Bulldog Nation in general. Uh, I want to thank uh, Coach Vince Dooley and Michael Adams for hiring me and for Greg McGarity and President Jerry Moorhead for letting me stick around a while. And I uh, want to especially thank all the current players and former players that have had the opportunity to coach here at Georgia, all the staff members that uh, have worked so hard uh, alongside me to make Georgia an even better place uh, than it already is. And, uh, you know, the red, coat, the red coats, the, the cheerleaders, the, the students, you know, all the dog walks, all the memories have been just uh, phenomenal for myself and for my family. And uh, Georgia's been our home. Athens has been uh, a true blessing to me and my family. And I'm just very thankful for all the, uh, all the time that I've been able to spend here. And uh, it's been great. So with that, I'll let uh, Greg be able to say what he wants to say. And then you guys can let it rip. Yeah. OK. Well, first of all, we want to thank Mark, Catherine, and their family for dedicating the past 15 years to the University of Georgia and to the Athens community. Uh, days like yesterday are the most difficult in our profession, especially when dealing with someone who has the character of Mark Rigg. And we sincerely appreciate Mark's professionalism at all times. We look forward to having the opportunity to continue to work alongside Mark and Catherine in the future at the University of Georgia. Questions? Mark, do you agree to take a, another role within the athletic department? Have I? No, I have not. Um, I've been given an opportunity uh, to stick around, and it's not been defined totally, but uh, in some way, shape, or form to continue to bless the players. Uh, number one, and the, and the university in general, and, and the athletic association, just any way that I could be helpful. I've been offered an opportunity to do that. Um, my plan right now, <clears throat> quite frankly, is to uh, you know get prepared for this bowl game. Um, I'm really looking forward to coaching these, these boys one more time. And, um, and But in the meantime, since I'm not on the road recruiting, Excuse me. Since I'm not on the road recruiting right now, I'll have um, an opportunity to look at a lot of options. I think I think there are going to be a lot of options to weigh, and uh, so I'm I'm blessed in that way and thankful about that. So I, I, I'm just not ready to say what I want to do yet, but it's very um, very attractive to to have the thought of uh, being able to stay in Athens and and in some way, shape, or form continue to to be. Uh, Someone who can uh, help these, uh, you know, help our young people. Please raise your hand if you have four <coughs> microphones. Here. Uh, Mark, I know you, you just said you're weighing your options, but is continuing to coach an option for you? Oh yeah, no doubt. Uh, I'll say this: um, if and when I do coach again, I'm looking forward to coaching again. In terms of you know being more hands-on. Uh, I miss I miss coaching quarterbacks. I miss calling plays. I miss that part of it. Um, so whether it's in the role of head coach, coordinator, quarterbacks coach, whatever it is, um, if in fact I choose to do that, I, I, I'd be really excited about coaching QBs again and, and getting in the middle of the offensive strategy. And, and not that I wasn't in it, but I wasn't calling it. And I think I'd be. Uh, more apt to do that again. <clears throat> Greg, when did you know it was time for a change? When did you come to its conclusion that Mark was no longer fit for the job? Well, as coming home from the Tech game, uh, Mark and I spoke later that evening and uh, agreed to meet the next morning. So uh, that's when that's. I wanted to wait till the season was over, and basically. That was the timing of it. Was there a moment before that? I don't think 
No, I think you, you always prepare. Uh, I think that's the job of an athletic director, whether it be football, basketball, whatever sport is. You never know when the, the coach is going to come in and, and say they're done. Uh, I recall experiences at uh, my former institu institution to where that happened. And I knew I didn't want that to happen again. So uh, lessons learned there. But no, it's Saturday after the Tech game. And you know it was a very quiet ride home for me to, to really uh, dig down deep and, and make sure that's, that's what my, heart, my gut told me to do. Coach, how about just the whirlwind of you talked to us on Saturday, right. no concern, according to you, in terms right. of the job, but then not even 24 hours later to get this news. Right. Well, that is part of the business. You know, it's not um, all that shocking to think that it could happen, but, you know, my focus was always on, you know, moving forward and uh, recruiting and, and uh, you know, bringing in the best class we could bring in and, and continue to build uh, – you know, a future team that would be able to, you know, win a championship. But, um, you know, it didn't work out that way. But I'll, I'll say this. Uh, <clears throat> I guess it's a lot like how I uh, manage things in the middle of a game. You know, things don't go exactly the way you want. And you know they, they, that they, always, they don't always go the way you want. Then, uh, you know, you can spend a lot of time trying to figure out what happened or who did what or, or you could – Figure out where you're at, and then think of in terms of what what do we do next to win. What, you know, so instead of trying to find a kid that made a mistake or try to find the coach that did something he shouldn't have done, or maybe was responsible for something, or want to chew somebody's rear end or whatever. I mean, my my focus has always been on where are we and what do we got to do to win. You know, and I kind of feel like the same way right now. You know, I I, I see you know where I am. Georgia sees where they are. And uh, everybody's going to do what they think is in the best interest to, to have success in the future. So that's kind of how I look at it. Uh, Greg, you spent six paragraphs in your statement lauding mm -hmm. Coach Rick for his leadership and his character right. and his performance. Right. And Jerry Moorhead spent another mm -hmm. long paragraph lauding everything about him. Right. What then was this decision based on? Well, that remains to be between uh, Mark and myself. Uh, we had a, uh, a good, mature adult conversation on Saturday, uh, Sunday morning for an hour, hour and a half or so. And, uh, you know, those things will, will really remain between Mark and myself. Greg, this is uh, to you. Um, what are your thoughts on... Um Jeremy Pruitt and whether or not if the new coach would want him back on staff, would you welcome that? Well, I'd rather I'd rather us to focus on Mark today. Uh, that's we can talk about those things later. But today's all about Mark and you know the decision that was reached yesterday. So I I just prefer to defer those uh, to a later date. Are we gonna let the young lady ever get get a chance to speak? <laughs> Thank you, guys, sir. Well, maybe you're next. What well, happen? okay. I don't know if you need a mic or not. Oh, not, not to hurt. I'm very loud. <laughs> Are they okay yeah. without the mic? Or we need the mic for. Yeah, let's, let's get a mic back there. Yeah. Back there. We got and time. you're next. I was actually going to have her after you, but <laughs> Schultz is next. What will happen with the contract? That's a substantial amount of money still left on the table. Well, as I said earlier, uh, even though it hadn't been executed, uh, a deal's a deal. A handshake uh, to me is a signed agreement. So. Uh, the contract that our board approved at the uh, previous board meeting is in full effect and uh, will certainly be honored. So uh, there are no issues there, even though it's not executed, and that's the way it's always been. I mean, we're, <coughs> we're uh, a handshake means something here. Mark, this obviously is a new situation for you. What ultimately do you think will determine what you want to do next, and right. how long do you foresee yourself taking with this decision? Right. Uh, that's a good question. Even uh, these next two weeks, I mean, they're all earmarked for recruiting. I mean, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You know, to the dead period, I was going to be on the road every single day for 14 days or whatever it was. So now that I'm not recruiting, there's really nothing on my calendar. And so even that bit of time will allow me to decompress a little bit, 
and excuse me, and try to just prayerfully consider what's next. Um, and then there may be more opportunities that come in the next few hours, few 24, 48 hours, that type of thing. I mean, I'm going to listen to uh, anybody that has interest in me, coaching or not. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, just really in any area or any arena, that's a possibility. So, um, but I, you know, since 1986, I've always really tried to um, uh, just try to walk daily with the Lord and, and try to figure out what he really wants me to do, and, and I want to try to be obedient to that. Um, I was reading, uh, not to bore everybody, but reading Matthew uh, uh, a couple weeks ago when uh, when Christ, prior to before he got uh, crucified, he was, he was praying, and while he was praying, he's sweating blood, and... Um, and he's saying, Lord, take this cup from me. Please take this cup from me. He prayed that three times. But every time after he prayed it, he said, not, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. And uh, so that's kind of been uh, my thoughts over the last couple of weeks even. Just, you know, Lord, your will be done. Whatever your will is, that's, that's what I want to do. So I just don't know what that looks like yet. Mark, why did you decide to coach in the, in the bowl game? I know some coaches uh, when they're not right. retained. Oh but... man, I mean, I was very, I was very thankful for the opportunity. You kidding me? Get to coach one more time with these guys and finish the season? Yeah, I was, I was all for that. If if it wasn't offered to me, I'd have asked for it. Yeah, very excited about that. With all due respect, Coach, Mr. McGarrity, is there a short list of candidates, and when will the search begin? Well, I just, I mean, real briefly, I mean, we will start immediately, but again, this is about Mark today. I mean, I, I really won't have hardly anything to say about the new search. I think that's not appropriate right now, but uh, in due time, I'm sure a, a new head coach will be announced. And I'll say this, if it's all right. Um, spoke with the team last night and um, just helped them understand that, you know, things like this happen as part of the business. Um, and I encourage them, number one, to, to behave and to, to know that we're going to keep everybody accountable to anything we've always held them accountable to academically and socially and, and all those things. Uh, <clears throat> but to also realize that they're basically making a first impression for their new head coach starting yesterday. And I even told them about the time that I took the job at Georgia while I was still at Florida State. And I was trying to do both jobs at the same time, trying to coach the bowl game at Florida State. We were playing in the national championship. And, and you know, so in the morning I was trying to be Florida State, in the afternoon I was trying to do Georgia and all that. And that little Nokia phone would ring, you know, every so often. And about every other time it was about some kid not behaving like he should, you know. So I'm like, oh, here we go before I even get on campus. Got to deal with that. But, uh, but I told him it's really important to uh, to do the right thing and make a good first impression before you even meet whoever it is, and then to be be supportive of whoever that is. You know, uh, understand that the more everybody buys in, the faster everybody buys in, the the, the better off it's going to be. And then the last thing I asked them is to, uh, you know, let's finish this bowl season great. We've got a bunch of seniors that are shooting for their 40th win as a class, and you know that's kind of hard to do, and it's, you know it means a lot to those guys and. And uh, so those are the things that I talk to, the, talk to them about. Coach, when you made the trip to see uh, Jacob Eason after the Auburn game, was that your decision to make that trip? And oh, yeah. what was the message? Was there kind of a message that yeah. maybe this could potentially happen? Oh, it was definitely my, um, it's my decision to make that trip. Uh, talking about Jacob Eason and uh, actually two other guys that signed financial aid papers, which, which allowed that to happen, to have free access to him. Uh, the message was basically going there to enjoy each other's company, number one, and number two is get ready to play some ball for the dogs, you know? And uh, so uh, it was just a matter of knowing that, you know, he's a very important part of the recruiting class, your quarterback is. Uh, you know, uh, a big part of that. Usually, you know, you, when you have a quarterback like that commit early, you ask him to 
to lead already. You know, you're not here yet, but you can lead by helping build your class. And I think he's done a great job of that. Um, and I think there's a lot of guys that have been very excited about uh, the possibility of coming to Georgia in, in this particular class. And, and uh, they all still, I mean, they know each other, they love each other, they've bonded with each other. And, and just if you're curious the message I'm giving those guys, and what I, I talked to Jacob last night, as a matter of fact, you know, I said just, I said be patient. I said see who the next guy is. You might get really excited about that. And then the rest of the guys might get really excited about that. Just, you know, I'm not saying don't check out other options and all that kind of stuff to be, you know, to be proactive or whatever, but don't don't jump the gun. You, you chose Georgia for a reason, and it was more than just uh, me or Coach Schottenheimer or whatever it may be. Uh, so, you know, I encouraged him. And I'll encourage all these guys, uh, you know, to do the same because it's a, they're a great group of guys and uh, there's a chance for them to come in uh, and be one of the best classes in the United States of America. And, uh, you know, I said, might it be a blessing to be on the front end, on the front end of a guy's contract rather than, you know, year 16. So uh, it may be a blessing to you. So that, that's kind of what I told him last night. Coach, I want to congratulate you on your time at Georgia, and thank you, and uh, definitely for uh, the, the respect and giving you've shown to the media and the Bulldog Nation. As you can imagine right now, there is some, a lot of folks out there that are upset, and uh, is there anything you can say to the fan base yeah. that kind of calms things a little? Yeah, well, just... I guess you could tell everybody that I'm going to be fine. My wife and I will be fine. We're we're empty nesters. Uh, we're still madly in love. We uh, we'll probably get to do some things we just haven't been able to do in the past. I've been coaching for 33 years straight, and that's that's a long grind, and uh, it, can, it can wear a man out a little bit, especially sitting in the head coach's chair. But um, but we're very excited about our future. It, and it may very well be that we stay in Athens. We may stay in Athens for good. I, I don't know what will happen yet. But it's a very strong draw for us. It's a very uh, uh, attractive option for us. And, uh, and I would just say to the fans, too, you know, as soon as a new guy gets named, there's going to be a, there's gonna be electricity around here. There's going to be a lot of excitement and a lot of momentum and uh, and support, you know, support him and support his staff and, and obviously support the players. And, you know, everybody, you know, Georgia football is going to be around a whole heck of a lot longer than I'm going to be alive and has been around, you know, for over 100 years and all that. So uh, I just appreciate everybody and how they've treated me and my family. Um, Coach, what was the reaction to the guys when you told them uh, the meeting yesterday, and then how are you taking their reaction and all their support that they're showing for you? Yeah. Well, it's not like we had open dialogue. You know, 